welcome to Ink Pulp Audio with video now. Uh, I gave an intro, guys. You probably no one's heard it yet, but I gave an intro last week of what we're doing this this season for the podcast. But because we're all quarantined uh, or social distancing or whatever the virus has us doing, I figured this would be an interesting solution. So we're going to get to everyone drawing, but let me start by introducing everyone here. First, Matteo Scalera. Say hi, Matteo. Hey, how you doing, man? <laughs> and Jim Mafood. What up, guys? All right, cool. So the AI that's built into the Zoom machine will pick up on whoever's talking and give them the show. Although it's not doing that for me right now for some reason. Oh, I'm it's not a good show, wife. but <laughs> what? Hey, it's not a good show. In general. No, it's a terrible <laughs> show. <laughs> Look at me getting out of the light. Um, all right, so um, Mateo, you're busy working on a project we can't really talk about, right? Mm, I mean, what when is this going to be released? More or less? Monday, you know. Oh, Monday, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, then I, I'm just going to say that it's uh, Batman related. Uh, mini series. Okay, good. Uh, Perfect. That's all we'll say. And we'll see working, but we won't know much because that page looks pretty benign, I think, right? Pretty safe. Uh, <laughs> really, but okay. you know, <laughs> what, I'll leave it to your discretion. Whatever, man. I, I think they're gonna <laughs> announce it anyways. I don't think it's a bit. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, uh, Jim, and what are you going to be drawing today? I'm working on um, an image for uh, my Skull Funk Radio podcast. So I'm oh, just doing like, cool. I'm just going to do some paint, some zip of toning. And then I've got some blank paper too, man. And I'm probably just going to sketch, just, just hang out and have fun. All right. Hey, what did you end up doing with all those awesome drawings from the Portland podcast I did? Those are just in a sketchbook. Those are awesome, dude. They're they're just you know they're in one of my main sketchbooks, but um, I scanned all the pages, man. If you need like you know high reses of those, or I'm sure they'll end up in one of my art books. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, I think it. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's cool. I, I wonder if anyone would want you to make prints. I don't know if the audience is big enough. I don't know. They're great, but thank you. You don't think there's a demand for um. Bob Shrek prints. Like I don't know. I mean, I think like maybe five people would buy that one. <laughs> it could be. It could be a series of like you know eight and a half by eleven. I mean, if you sold them as a series, I wonder is one. Yeah, thinking. yeah. But I don't know. I'm always thinking. When we when we sit down to draw, dude, I'll 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 grab that sketchbook and go through okay. some stuff. Why don't we? Well, let's just go into that now. I'll switch my camera to my table, and it'll give us a okay. jump off. Yeah. Okay. All right. So I do. I'm just gonna do this. So what'd you say, Mateo? And I'm just gonna move oh, the camera okay, a little cool, bit cool. for me. It's not, it's and not just real quick, um, you know, I'm I'm chilling in my studio. Mateo, you're in your studio, and Jim, you're in yours. Yes. But, yeah. I'm actually. Yeah. I have uh, my studio's in my basement. So I have a two floors house and uh, well, it's actually a small apartment. So, uh, and uh, yeah. The studio and you're coming the, in from Parma, Italy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm born and raised. And Jim, you're coming <laughs> in from Portland, Oregon from your studio. Yes. And I'm coming in from Miami. I mean, from Atlanta, but it looks like Miami. <laughs> all right i'm gonna switch cameras to my table oh yeah jim i'm gonna give you the floor when you're ready to show the stuff oh sure yeah it's um it's just this sketchbook i like these um watercolor sketchbook it's uh That's yeah, high quality, thick ass paper that you can do pen and ink. Uh, you can you can paint on this stuff, man. You could do like full blown paintings on this. 
Have we done that? Uh, yes. I'm just turning around looking. I'm, I'm here. Yeah, do your thing. And so, oh, here we go. So here's the, the ink pulp stuff start, starts. All right, so the first one was me and Bendis. You and Bendis. Uh, you and Nick Darrington. Bob Shrek. Tony, Chastine. Right, right. Did you get one of me and Brandon? Yeah, right here. Oh, okay, cool, cool. Brandon Graham. And then that was the last one, dude. I felt bad because um, the last interview you did at my house. Tyler. It, Ty, with Tyler, it, it was the day I was getting ready to go to New York Comic Con. Right, so, right. So you got you guys, you guys were talking, and I was just quietly running around my house, packing up all my shit That's for New right. York. That's so, right. so sorry about that, uh, well, it's, Tyler. Um, yeah, I mean, maybe maybe throw those up like midweek next week after the podcast is up if people want to see it. Oh, for sure. Well, and then Sean. Uh, no. This final image, dude, of me and you, and I'm wearing some weird, like, Mexican wrestling mask. Wait, wait, I gotta see this. <laughs> I don't think I saw that one. No. <laughs> Where is this? It's like, it's like um, <laughs> what's with the outfit? I, I, I think I think I put this up on like my Instagram story just to announce when you released the Portland sessions or yeah. something. Yes, that sounds familiar. Okay, well, I'll send you, I mean, like I said, if, if you want files of all these, I've got, I've got them all scanned, so. Oh, uh, yeah, maybe I'll post them if, if you don't mind, that'd be cool. Yeah. It's all right, let's get into some of this shit we're dealing with right now. So, one thing I really want to do with this podcast is, I do want to talk about this coronavirus thing that's going on. Um, oh shit! Hold on, somebody. We lost. We lost Jim. Oh, Jim's lights went out. Oh no! Did it? Mateo, Mateo's lights went out. That's weird. Yeah. So I want to. He'll. He'll be back. I hope. Oh yeah, he just text, he just texted us. Yeah, I saw that. Let me text him back real quick. Um, so with this virus going on, um, you know, you got Matteo, who's all the way over in Italy. I'm in, in Atlanta, Eastern Standard Time. And Jim, you're all the way out on the West Coast in Portland. Yep. So these crazy time differences are going on. Um, and everyone's experiencing everything. When Matteo gets back, Okay, hold on. Mateo wants me to try and connect him again. So all this shit that's going on, I, I do want to keep it in because it shows you what this streaming shit is like. Um, this is good uh, behind the scenes for... It is. It is. For everyone. <laughs> yeah. All right. So I think if he just clicks the link in the email again, he should be good. And hopefully he'll be back. So nice. what I'm hoping to do is get Matteo talking about it because it hit Italy really hard. And it's just now starting to hit here. I mean, today we're recording this on, uh, what's today's date? March 27th? Friday the 27th, yes. Yeah, so it's just starting to affect us here. Not nearly as much as Italy, but I mean... What's crazy right now is we live in this time where there's so much information out there and you got one half saying the media is fake and all this shit. So you don't know what to believe. Right. What, I'm, what I've done from the start is I remember talking to like family members. They're like, ah, it's all fake. I'm like I'm talking to my friend in Italy and they're dealing with some shit. Like if that's coming this way, we're, we're going to be in for some shit ourselves. So, yeah, yeah. I'm trying to get, 
I think even when I was talking to you early on, Jim, I felt like I sounded crazy. And you were like, what is Sean freaking out about? <laughs> That's my general reaction to um to me? Our conversations most of the time anyway. What's Sean freaking out about? <laughs> uh, no, I'm joking. But no, it uh yeah, people people that are saying it's fake or this, that, and the other. It's like, yeah, but why chance it? Like, just just yeah, shut up and yeah. stay home. Like, why? Right, but we're also at the point where it's obviously not fake. Right. I mean, Oh, for sure, for sure. Yeah. So, it, you know, like, in the beginning, people were saying that, and now it's like, all right, can we admit it's not fake, and how are we going to take care of this? And all that jazz. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, by fake, you mean people were recognizing that there's this problem, but like, it's not a big deal because it hasn't really affected America yet. Well, um, at the very beginning, there were people who was thinking it was just a, a fake news story. I mean, not not totally made up, but like, it was ridiculous to think it was anything that, that would ever need to be addressed. Right, right. And like now, it's like oh shit, this shit is real as can be. Yeah, I mean Americans are in denial about a lot of things, though about most things. So it it has to like literally punch people in the face out here to get them yeah, worked up, you know. And you do tend to think we're the center of the world for some reason. Because, man, I mean, I, I heard about this right when I got back from um, Japan in December because our friends out in Japan, um, Yo and Peach Momoko, a brilliant artist, I was out there hanging out with them. And as soon as I got home, Corona started breaking out in China. And so they're the first ones that told me about it. And they were saying, hey, we might not make it to Emerald City Comic Con in early March because traveling might be affected by this virus yeah and that, that was my first indication like oh shit this is like this could be like an actual serious thing yeah and i felt like at that time we were like is it really something we need to worry about yeah and at that time in december i figured well this is this is just something that's going to affect like the East or other countries or right, like, I, I, right. you know, we didn't know it was going to spread the level of what's happening. So, right. So Matea, Matea is back. Matea, you can hear us again. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. Well, why don't you tell us like what it's been like for you? Cause it, it really ramped up where you are first. Yeah, you know, the thing is that wherever you go, at the end of the day, like, we all the same. So we basically did what you did, basically. So at first, we were like, uh, yeah, but, you know, it's over there. So nothing's going to happen to us. Of course. I mean, especially because we had other episodes with other viruses, like the SARS. Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And it really didn't affect us, you know? I mean, right. we had the, uh, how do you call the, the other one, the cow disease? The, Is that H1N1? Was that? Was that the H1N1? I don't know about that. It, it was years ago, a lot, lots of years ago, like 20 years ago. Oh, oh, more than 20. Okay, okay, okay. And, uh, well, anyways, you know, and every time, you know, uh, you, you hear the news that somebody gets sick, but, you know, nothing really, really, you know, uh, big happens. So, so we, we did exactly what you guys did. So we're like, yeah, but, you know, got to still see each other. Got to be a little more careful than usual but you know right. not gonna give up on all 
the things that we normally do. Right. And, you know. Right. Uh, and then it happened. And, you know, we had to take measures, the same measure that you're taking now. The, the weird thing is that now there's a lot of countries that are dealing with this. So I was expecting a little more caution, but um, evidently, like, that's how, you know, the human mind works. Because I was talking to a guy, a friend of mine in Brazil the other day. Yeah. Uh, he's a colorist, uh, Leonardo Olea, the guy yeah. who usually colors all of uh, uh, Ramos stuff. Yeah. And it, it was asking me, it was like, so is that bad? Because here, it's like, I hear the news and it looks like it's bad. But here in Brazil, everybody's like chilling. They don't care. They're saying that oh. nothing's going to happen to us. So and I was like, yeah, dude, it's going to happen to you as well. The same way it happened to us. So right. <laughs> like, there's no, there's no way out. So. And uh, so it's, you know, everywhere it's the same and everybody is, uh, uh, underestimates, uh, everybody underestimates the uh, curse. Right. Um, now, Mateo, you you had to deal with some interesting, scary stuff because of this. Tell us about like your girlfriend's mother and what you had to do for that. Oh yeah. Well, actually, like uh, it was pretty weird because uh, um, one of their cousins got infected almost immediately. How old is he? Uh, it was uh, 65. And uh, he passed he away? To, yeah, a few days ago. Oh, oh shit. Yeah. So, um, so, yeah, he had to take a train, I think, for work. And uh, he passed right by the one of the you know more affected areas in the north nearby Milan. Yeah. So from then on, he started having problems breathing. He went to the hospital. From then on, it's been like uh, like nobody has seen it, and. Uh, yeah, so it started from him, and then his wife started to be pretty sick. And my girlfriend's parents were, you know, they, they had breakfast with them a few days earlier. Yeah. So they started, you know, getting worried, but not so much. You know, their first uh, uh, thing was, uh, oh, you know, nothing's going to not gonna happen to us. Right, right. So they weren't giving up all the all the things that they used to do, uh -huh. and uh, but then yeah, my my girlfriend's mom started to feel pretty sick, and so they started to understand that it was pretty serious. So mm, and like one after one week. Uh, her dad uh, started to have the same problem. So, but for them, it was uh, pretty unusual because the main symptoms for it is uh, having trouble breathing and, you know, yeah. coughing a lot. And they weren't really having that. They were just, uh, the main thing for them was a lot of uh, stomach age. Yeah. And a lot of problems like, they, they would really struggle uh, eating. They weren't able to eat anything. They had zero and, appetite? Uh, yeah, zero appetite. And when they tried ingesting something, they would have, you know, nausea and, you know, they wanted to, you know, right. puke. Right. 
and and a complete lack of energy. Those were the main things because the fever itself wasn't that high, you know, the the wasn't that heavy. Mm -hmm. the body temperature was just a few degrees higher than it was supposed to be. That's it. Yeah, yeah, just a few degrees. Oh. So the the you know the the worst cases you have a really bad fever uh big troubles breathing so a really hard time breathing and in their their case it was like that but uh their doctor told us that it was uh in some people that was uh you know those were the symptoms so we and what he suggests us, and that was uh, a good thing that he did, was to buy uh, this tool that is called find the English name for it. You're looking up the name of the uh, the tool they gave you. Yeah. It, what does it do? It, it basically it measures the level of oxygen in your blood. Okay. Okay. It it's a really small tool. You put your finger in there, and it gives you the level of oxygen. Okay, like a breathalyzer With, thing. Uh, it's not, it's a uh, fresh to oximeter or something like that. Okay. So it's like, it's almost like a thermometer, but instead of gauging your body temperature, it gauges oxygen. Uh, yeah. Fuck, dude. So uh, I should. The oximeter. Okay, oximeter. Okay, so o oximeter. Okay, so the the, the, yeah, that sounds good. That sounds good. I'm not a doctor. So he told us, uh, okay, so since they're not having uh, high body temperature and the cough is not that heavy, mm -hmm. the only thing that you should really keep an eye on is the level of oxygen in the blood. Uh huh. And uh, so they would constantly, like three or four times a day, they would, you know, put their finger in there and measure the level of oxygen. And one day, uh, she started. Even if she was kind of starting to recover, yeah, uh, her level of oxygen started going down immediately, like all of a sudden, and. Uh, you know, in between 95 and 100%, you're good. Under that, you got to start, you know, re worrying. Right. Okay. So our level of oxygen, we're going down under 90. Uh huh. So after a while, we just call the ambulance and they had to bring her to the hospital. Lucky enough, we did it because after just, I don't know, like, 20 minutes after being hospitalized, she started having trouble breathing and stuff. So, so it happens that fast. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. When the level of oxygen is low, you start having problems really, really fast. It means that, you know, the, the lungs are starting to collapse. Right, right. So, so yeah, she, she got hospitalized. They, you know, they attached her to a uh, oxygen machine. So from then on, it took her like uh, a week to recover, starting to eat and stuff like that. So she started feeling better and better every day. 
until they were just released her, and now she's uh, healing, but at home. What about her dad? Did it never get bad with him? Uh, it was uh, basically the same, but at, at a higher, at a you know a lighter level. So okay, was, but was uh, he ever hospitalized? No, no, okay. never needed to. But he still, like after almost three weeks, he still has a fever. So it's uh, one of the main thing I'm noticing with this disease is uh, the length, like it's never ending, man. Yeah, so he's still fighting it. No, it's like he's fine now. He's able to eat, but at night during the evening, he starts having a few degrees of fever. Still, you know, he's still there. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's a really, really long, long process. Say that again, Mateo. It's a really long process. Like the healing process is really, really long, especially because we don't know what kind of uh, uh, medicine you gotta take yet. So, oh, you still so they don't even know how to treat it yet. Not yet, no, no. Wow. There's a few antibiotics and a few drugs that limit certain aspects of the of the disease, but. There's no cure, actually. You gotta just, they'll just help you to resist during as long as the disease in your body be. Right, so it's mainly just a therapy while you're sick. They don't know how to treat yeah. it. Yeah, no, not yet. They're, they said that basically it will take in between 12 and 18 months for the actual vaccine. Yeah. Well, you could tell our idiot president that that'd be helpful. That's a long ass wait, man. Yeah, I mean, the, the actual, like, they'll, they'll find a cure soon, but from then, from that moment to the moment in which it's the official vaccine that you can take, it's gonna take that. That it's the long process. You know? Yeah. Some they people have, don't. They have to test it. They have to test it on animals, and they have to test it on actual human beings. And you know, it's a, a really long process. Right, right, right. Totally. Um, and now, you, now your girlfriend is pretty sure she has it. Oh, it's a hundred percent sure. Like and, and uh, is, she's having the same symptoms. Is it mild for her right now? So far, yeah, but you know, you can never know. So we right. just keep you, our eyes open. You've had it? What? Do you think you've had it? Oh, it's like, it's not, like, it's not an option. If she has it, I have it too. We'll live together. So there's no, right, but have no you felt, way around have you, it. Have you felt any symptoms? Uh, so far, no, but, uh, you know, there's, um, there's a study that they made in the one of the first. Um, basically, there's a there's a small um, town in the north of Italy, and it's one of the first infected towns, if we want to call it like that. Yeah. And uh, basically, uh, they decided since it was one of the earliest ones. They still had the resources and stuff, so they decided to test the old, uh, all the citizens of that town. Basically. Yeah. And uh, because now, if you want to take a test, it's basically impossible. There's no is way you can get it. But uh, back the in the test, day, so you're was, saying the tests are are not available because they're 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 used up. Yeah. 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 So basically, uh, they tested the entire town. Yeah. And basically, what they found out is that the number of infected was super high. So basically, with the highest, really, really high percentage of infected people. But 
50 to 75 percent of people of the infected were had no symptoms at all. Wow. So you have no idea why some people get it and some people don't. Well, you get it because it's super, you know, contagious. So, but even if you get it, there's a high chance that you don't feel anything. You know? Right, right. But you're still infected, so you've got to give it to people. So you feel perfectly good. So right. you're going out to the grocery store and buy stuff. But in the meantime, you're infecting everybody. And that, yeah, and that's what they're saying. That's why we need to be super careful and socially distance. So you've yeah. been, and and you are in Italy. You're under a um, like a quarantine order. Like you can't leave your house without permission. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah. We need a specific. Uh, basically, there's a self. Uh, uh, I don't know. What to say it's a self certification yeah so there's a you gotta print a piece of paper with your name and everything all your personal data and then you get to declare why you're going out so the only reason is for health wall work or a necessity like you're going home you know so you're allowed to go to work uh some some jobs yeah okay uh, basically all the uh the offices and everything that's considered to be um uh, absolutely are you say uh, you cannot uh necessary them, absolutely sorry necessary yeah absolutely necessary they can stay open like grocery stores and hospitals and shit like that? Yeah, exactly. Uh, banks, but just for specific things, like for mortgages and stuff that right. you cannot postpone. Right. And, um, so the government sent a list of which uh, things can stay open and which not. And um, yeah, so basically that's it. So if you have to go out and buy medicine, or you gotta go out to help somebody who's, you know, who's infected, like your parents need some specific. Right, things. and that's actually, that's what I wanted to get to next with you, was so when your girlfriend's parents were sick, you had to go over their house, right? Yeah, yeah, because um, we called when her mom was, uh, Starting to feel pretty bad, we called the ambulance. But the first time, they, I mean, they took her to the hospital, but the day after, they released her because the symptoms weren't bad enough. Uh -huh. So, uh, but so from then on, we had to give her some specific uh, antibiotics, and she needed uh, by a shot. You know, by the range, like an injection. Yeah, an injection. So you had to give it to her. Yeah, because um, you know the her brother lives nearby, but he's not. You know, he doesn't know how to do it. So we had to, we had to go there with a asthma suit. Okay. That's what you would wear. You both had to put on hazmat suits to do that. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm asking, but I, I know you sent me the pictures. I just I, I want to kind of document all that. All right. So oh, yeah, you asked you. Yeah, yeah. Are you um allowed to go out for like a walk if you want? Are you allowed to like go outside and go for a run or anything like that? Uh no. Uh, you're allowed. To to go out if you uh, demonstrate that you really need it, like you have a specific condition so that you have to absolutely have to move. Right, okay, I see that you need the circulation. Yeah. 
So other, otherwise you can just uh, be out just walking. Or if you have to walk the dog, you can do it, but you gotta stay at a specific distance from your house. You cannot go anywhere. Even if you had to buy food, you cannot go in any grocery store. You gotta go in the closest one to your place. Really? Okay. Okay. Yeah. You you have a dog, right, Mateo? Yeah. Yeah, I have a dog. So that's the only uh time in the day where I'm uh, able to get out of it. And how long have you been sort of trapped in the house? Uh this is the end of week four now. Is that like driving you crazy? Uh, no, because you know I'm uh, being a comic book artist. I'm pretty used to, right. you know. Mm, I'm no. used to it. I, the only thing that it's uh, different is that I don't have the. You know, we're used to stuff during the weekend. and uh, that's the only thing that changes for me. But during the week. Basically, my day remains more or less the same. You know, I just wake up, I just uh, have breakfast, and then I start drawing, and then I have lunch here in my house, and then I restart drawing, and then I have dinner, and then I go to bed. So I watch a movie or something, and then I gotta go to bed. So nothing really changes. Sure. What about restaurants? Are you allowed, like, are restaurants open? Can you get food delivered to you? Yeah, the restaurants are all closed, and uh, you can, they can only deliver food to your so house. They, so now everybody, like, not every restaurant was, uh, you know, doing that, and now everybody's doing it because that. So you problem. can get restaurant food, but it has to be delivered? Yeah. The only way you can get food from right. Okay. All right. Well, Isn't it the same there as well? Right now, we don't have, like, we're allowed to leave. We're basically allowed to pretty much do whatever we want in all but five states right now. And yeah. just everyone is trying to be responsible and, and not going out. But, like, we can go to a restaurant and get carry out, like, go to the counter and pay. Or a lot of places now are offering this curbside thing where you, you place your order over the phone and then you pull up in front of the restaurant and they bring the food out to your car. Um, yeah. So we're not on. But you're not allowed to sit down and eat there. Well, you're allowed to, but most restaurants aren't allowing it themselves. Like legally, you're allowed to. Like we don't have these things in place like you have that don't allow us. But most restaurants are just like, we're not going to open that part of a restaurant right now. Yeah. So, yeah. Gotcha. I mean, I'm sure we're going to end up where you are at some point because it's starting to get better. Jim, is that the same over there as well? Uh, yes. It's, um, it's basically like the unwritten rule is stay at home unless you have to go to the grocery store or somewhere important. Uh, there's restaurants and coffee shops that are still open in my neighborhood, but it's uh, carry out only. And yeah. everyone has, um, you know, changed their hours to where they're only open from, like the coffee shops only open from 7 a.m. to 2 p.m. now. Yeah, we got a lot. Yeah. Of so, you know, it, it's it's, it's stuff like that. I mean, I, I've been doing, I'm not a big, I've never been big on cooking. So, I mean, I have my place stocked with food, but I also will still order takeout a couple times a week from the local Thai food restaurant. And they'll, they just drive it down the street and like leave it at my door, basically like ring the doorbell. Yeah. And then I have delicious Thai food waiting for me, but, um, that double dragon. Double Dragon's closed, dude, because they're uh, technically a bar. Oh. Um, this is a different joint in my neighborhood, yeah, but... Double Dragon was more Vietnamese, right? 
Yeah, the Double Dragon's like a fusion spot, but since they operate like at night as a bar, basically, they had to shut down when all the bars had to shut down. Wow. So, um, yeah, man. I mean, the neighborhood I live in is like quiet anyway, and now it's like really quiet. So, uh, I'm just here, you know, do like you guys just drawing and doing my thing. Um, I've got lots of different projects going on. So I'm thankful that I, I have stuff to do every day. Yeah. Me too. Are you guys thinking about buying a bidet as well? Like everybody's <laughs> thinking. Of? I do. Yeah. I mean, it's, there's a toilet paper crisis here. Look, I was a fan of the bidet from the first time I, I went to Italy. I was like, I would love one of these. Yeah, man, and 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 the the obviously the toilets in Japan. I mean, when I went to Japan and like, <laughs> the toilets there, and also the whole like bowing instead of shaking the hands, that those policies should just be mandatory across the globe. Like, you know what I mean? Like, you can shake hands and give hugs to your close friends, but in general, especially at like comic cons and stuff. Just do the just do the bowing thing. Like, like make it an international thing at this point. It just seems to make way more sense. Uh, virus scare or no virus scare, you know? Just yeah, yeah, I get that. Make that be what everyone does, basically. Because I don't know about you guys, but I've been at Comic-Cons for years, uh, you know, through my life. And occasionally, you'll shake someone's hand and it's just like a weird clammy ass <laughs> oh, warm yeah. like moist hand and it's like oh fuck, oh man. yeah like, man it's like i need to go to the bathroom now just to wash my hands man like i don't know <laughs> weird weird all right so let's get into i think it's we're kind of heading there anyway but how's this affecting everyone like financial and business situations Mateo, it sounds like you haven't been affected that much by it. No, but to be honest with you, like I've just been lucky. But uh, at first, I wasn't even think about it, thinking about it. I was like, uh, well, I mean, it sucks. But at the same time, my working life won't change, won't really change. And uh, yeah. until a few days ago, I started. You know, I received an email from Image. I mean, I'm not doing an Image uh, book at the moment, but uh, I re still receive. You know, they still have my email address, so I received uh, an email from them saying that uh, all their books are suspended. And I was talking to uh, Rick uh, Ramander a few days ago. They was like, "Yeah, I don't know what to do now. Like, they stopped." all my books for now so i don't have to do anything like hmm, i wonder if that will happen for everything and uh, because diamond uh, actually like stopped distributing yeah. for this uh, yeah. for the next few weeks at least and yeah. i was like oh huh. so it never occurred to me until a few days ago so i started kind of not freaking out is too big of a word for that but i started thinking about it because you know i'm about to buy a new house and i'm about to, you know i'm about to you know open a start a mortgage and everything so i was starting you know to think about stuff like that but then as you were saying as you were uh anticipating i got an email from dc telling me that i don't have to worry about that but uh you know, still it's a mini series, so it's six issues. So I just, uh, I'm just hoping that you know it, it will be done by September, mid September. So I just hope that, hope that by then the problem will be solved this virus. But no, right. I mean that's you know. that's another topic we'll be covering on this uh, season of Impulp Audio during this quarantine is uh. Our business um, is is uh, the the industry of direct market comics is being hit very hard, 
and it's something we'll, we'll talk about. But uh, first, I want to talk about so Mateo hasn't been affected at all, at least not yet, from this in terms of finances or career. What about you, Jim? Uh, well, besides um, losing out on the money I would make at Emerald City, and then we were all scheduled to go to. Oh yeah, right, right, right. Yeah, uh, I almost forgot about that. Yeah. You know, we were scheduled to all go to Lexington, Kentucky, which we would be at literally right now. Um, oh my god! For that, dude, we'd be. Oh my god! You're right. Holy fuck! So. Uh, Today's Friday, right? Yeah, we'd be at the con right now. Um, so I, I lost two conventions this month, which definitely that 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 does hurt. I mean that that's um Yeah, I mean okay. I, I make I make income every year from doing Comic Cons, obviously. So I, I I lost out on that, but at the same time I just finished up and wrapped up a uh, Kickstarter for my pop up book that went well. Um I just launched a new self-published oversized art magazine called one dangerous donut and i've been getting orders for that through my website um give your thank you in case people want to order that what's that give your web web address out in case people listening want to get that oh sure it's just my name jim mafood.com and i wanted to say uh thank you to all you guys out there watching that actually did order the book so you know, and and I have um, some freelance jobs that are happening that are that started before the virus scare that I'm still working on and getting paid for. I have contracts with these people, so I mean they have to pay me. But yeah, I mean you know the the convention's not happening. That that's a, a financial hit. Um, I'm working on a new Girl Scouts series that is not on the schedule with image, but I mean, I was planning on it coming out next year from image. So I'm still working on all this stuff, assuming that um, things will recover right, and go back to normal, like whatever that means. And honestly, man, I know Sean, you know, Sean, you and I've been talking about this stuff almost every day, but if, if things don't recover, um, I want to come up with alternate plans on um, still making work, making comics, making art, and basically just putting it out myself and, and either crowdfunding it or right, right. Um, putting it into the world and still having the option out there of people being able to purchase my comics, my books, and my my work. Like, I'm not going to stop. So, um, Right, that's good. You know, it's it's interesting because like no one has answers, definitive answers right now to any of these um, questions and concerns. Right, right. So it's kind of like my attitude is like keep making work and and assume that you know there's going to be an answer to all this stuff at some point. And look, and it may be up to us to figure out the answer ourselves. I mean, right. I, I know that maybe like direct market comics and print comics take a hit. Maybe the industry does come back. Maybe it doesn't, but either way, I know someone like you and someone like me and Mateo will, will continue to do it and find ways to make it work. But it's, it's definitely... I, I don't know that we're going to go back to normal. Yeah. But, you know, there's also people, and I kind of put myself in this category of, like, at the industry, like, you need to evolve at some point. Just not. So I'm going to talk to Eric about that a lot tomorrow, I think, because he's got a lot of opinions on that. Yeah, yeah, I mean, one solution would be to, you know, we're actually talking about that, maybe doing something more independent. Yeah. So you get on the on the bright side, you get a direct contact with uh, the, the who's doing actually the book, and uh, doing that because the one of the main problems is not only the distribution of the thing, it's uh, also the fact that 
you know, comic books are an extra in people's lives. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so and now then, with yeah. people with all this uncertainty towards the future, people start, you know, giving up on the less important stuff and comic books are one of those for most of them. So uh, maybe doing that, so doing our thing, uh, we can't afford to, you know, to have lower prices on our products. Right. And, uh, so unless we distribute differently, oh, go ahead, go ahead. What? Well, sorry, I didn't get it. I said unless we distribute differently, like it doesn't cost any money at all to publish a digital comic. Oh yeah, yeah, that is definitely on the on the table. But also, you know, just doing it by yourself and not having a a publisher in between right. maybe it's uh you know it's one of the answers and right. uh right you know it sounds weird because now i'm actually working for a publisher but uh you know it that might be one of the solutions and uh so the the product is cheaper so you still lose readers but not so many right yeah, I, I, yeah, I think you're, uh, I think you're on something there. We've talked about that too, Jim. Oh yeah, oh yeah. And uh, the flip side of that is also like make unique specialty items like a pop up book or like an oversized um, limited edition sort of thing, like what I did with um, one dangerous donut here, and it's. So, Mateo, you remember the uh, Three Delicious Donuts news, yeah. newspaper oversized magazine we did for Japan? I like that yeah. format and that printing so much that I just did my own solo version of that. Oh, that's cool. And I had Yo design it, and it was printed at the same printer. It's oversized. It's 11 by 17. 11 by 17. When people see it, it just looks so awesome that it's like, Okay, well, I'm now making specialty items for a specific group of comics fans, art fans, and and Is collectors. That so smart that you're doing that. that so, smart. so you also so you have like your disposable like three or four dollar comic book, but you can also do like your specialty item, like I said, uh, in a different format that. I'm going to just sort of like make this stuff and just sell it directly to my fans through crowdfunding yeah. and social media. Yeah. yeah. So, Go ahead. so the the bottom line is my whole point is there's ways to keep continue making art and making comics and whatnot and getting it out to people. It's just, I think it's going to get to the point where each individual artist sort of has to figure out their following and their um, fan base what that fan base wants and how to get that product to them you know what yeah, i mean i think yeah yeah absolutely i think that one of the positive things that could come up from this is that the comic book people especially the uh, the people that work in the industry especially artists that have, have the tendency of being a little bit lazy and also you know on on one side, I understand because you're doing, you know, it, it takes a lot of time to draw uh, pages. But uh, at the same time, we have the tendency of being really lazy. So after drawing, we don't want to deal with anything else. So right. doing, you know, this this situation will probably force us to, you know, be less lazy. You know? Yeah, I mean, oh, uh, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I was done. Oh. For me, that's kind of what I think I've talked to Jim about this before. I was kind of forced into that position. I, I don't like, I'm not really getting freelance offers at all anymore, except for a little cover here and there. So I've been kind of forced to be like, all right, I got to be, I got to like run my business now and find ways to, to make money, uh, which is because yeah. I've, I've learned a lot about it. I've learned 
you know, I'm starting to learn how to do it more and more. But Jim, really good at it. So paying attention to what he does is helping. Yeah, um, I, and I wanted to get back to Jim's point also. Uh, um, like in studying art history, I just remember like when the camera was invented, everyone said that painting's going to die, or when the, the when uh, computers came around, everyone said the printing press, like the the hand typeset printing press, is going to die, and all those things didn't die; they just became highly specialized, and so right. Painters who kept at it, the, the value of their paintings went up and up and up. And same with printmaking. So uh, everything you're doing, Jim, falls along with those lines where you're making specialty items for uh, for a very specialized market. And I, I think that's I think that's healthy growth. It's yeah, it's one solution, uh, and it's also like I mean I'm I'm. The advantage of coming from like the 90s DIY self-published realm of doing right. comics and art, I mean, that that that's playing into a big part of what I'm sort of doing now. Because I, I have, through my whole life, been used to like the idea of like, okay, well, if no one wants to put this out, like, I guess I'll just do it myself and I have to handle the art and the printing and distributing it and getting it out to people that kind of comes with the territory of where I came from so it, it but if you're just a guy who wants to just you know draw monthly comics that might not be your particular bag that might not be your thing right, um, right. so for me it's, it's I've, I've always kind of had this idea of like well if worse comes to worse you know I just I, I guess I just put out my thing and it reaches less people but the audience becomes more um specialized then you right, know right, totally. um but yeah i mean for me man it's like okay there's always uh alternate uh, alternate solutions there's always like um other options it's just figuring out for each project what that solution is you know right yeah. Hey, you got to go back to being a hustler. Like, instead of trying to get work, you're trying to create sales, I guess, is the difference. Right. And it, you know, I mean, it's always, for me, it's like, it's always work. It's always falls under the umbrella of this is what I do every day. So, what do I have to do? You know, it's. Right, um, right, right. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, so for me, it's it's a, like Jim, it's affected me financially uh, in a big way. My income for the next two, three months was all conventions and the Kickstarter I have going for my uh, new art book. And the conventions were just taken away. So that income is just gone. And, uh, and then the Kickstarter takes its hit because people are... There's so much financial uncertainty because people aren't going into work. So, and like my wife works on commission only at a spa and those are closed. So right. it's not bringing in any money. So I understand like people don't want to spend money, um, but luckily and thankfully some people are. So Kickstarter's taking a little hit, I think, but it's, it's still surviving. Um, in fact, if you're listening, you don't know about it. It's called Drip. It's on Kickstarter. It's my new art book. Uh, please check that out if you haven't. Um, but yeah, so it's it, it it's forced us to then solve that problem of okay, my money's gone. What am I going to do now? And for me, a few interesting things popped up. One was this idea of, of connecting through internet video. I mean, I, I've been hanging out with Jim and Mateo and Tommy Lee Edwards and Eric and Jeff DeCal, just friends hanging out. So it's made my day a lot more interesting because I usually just sit here alone and draw. And I didn't realize how kind of like, I mean, I knew it was solitary, but I feel happier now when I get a little social interaction during the day and I'm productive. 
but we had um, Jason had basically sequestered, essentially sequestered Khan, which was just a virtual con experience where we all took uh, commissions and worked like in this format that you're watching, but we were live. And luckily I banked up a, a healthy amount of commissions and made back like a third of the income I had lost already. So I'm just creative problem solving. Oh, it's great. Part two, Jim. Oh yeah. What'd you say, Mateo? Oh, I just said that's great. Yeah, yeah. Great I mean, that, yeah. It's been it's been a learning experience. I've been very lucky, and it's also given me something to do. So I'm I'm just working my ass off trying to. Take each, it's nice to do commissions from home. I don't know about you guys, but I get to like spend more time studying and learning during the commission. So each mm -hmm. one is like a, a, an opportunity for growth. Like this Hellblazer I'm working on, like I have my little skull here. So I'm sort of looking at the planes and features and I got my little light here. So nice, nice. my lighting the way I want it and study that shit. So that's been nice. It's allowing me to grow. And there's not that, I mean, I think there's something important about doing commissions on the con floor because it's chaotic and noisy and difficult and stressful, but you learn from that too. But this has allowed me to focus on my growth. I like that. I yeah. prefer doing, I prefer doing the pieces at home too, man. Like, do you? Uh, really? Well, it's just, yeah, I, I, I get a better just overall product. I mean, you're right. There's a certain sort of energy and that comes with doing it on, on the convention floor. But um, I don't know. I just, I, I feel a little less pressure and a little less, uh, obviously way less distracted if I'm just doing this, this yeah. stuff at home. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's exactly how I feel. Um, but yeah, it's just, I mean, if anything, it's just taught me to be flexible and roll with the punches. I mean, if being an artist isn't easy, and it's always been kind of a struggle uh, for me just financially to, to make this work. So it, it's teaching me a lot about how to be better at that. So I'm just trying to embrace that element of it. Yes. And, I know and, and, and you're doing more, I mean, you're, you're doing more. Um, elaborate developed like fully i mean you're the stuff you've been showing me man i mean it's like they're like full-blown illustrations basically at this yeah, point yeah i'm doing like this is going to be another painting this one nice yeah so yeah i mean I, I'm, in, I'm enjoying that and I, I i have a few like freelance illustration jobs with the hip-hop world that i gotta kind of follow up on Make sure they're still wanting to go through it because they're artists too. I don't know how they're getting hit. Oh yeah. Just trying to figure out ways to to do that. One thing is this gave me the idea to have this podcast too, which was a, a new format for Ink Pulp Audio, one that I closed my mind to before, but now it seems kind of like relevant. Yeah, you're trying new stuff you're adapting i mean that's what it's sort of all about yeah yeah i'm learning that we've known that for a while <laughs> but yeah I'm, I'm paying attention I'm trying to oh yeah um you know i look forward to the next con we do i know that's that's like been the discussion is is like trying to figure out like okay so what when are we all actually going to see each other again? And uh, oh, yeah. at this point, like I said earlier, it's like I don't. No one really has. I don't think answers to any of this shit. So it's you can guess and speculate about basically all aspects of life right now, and the answers sort of like I don't know. Yeah, it's yeah. Everything's up in the air. But see, you know, and you know, it, it's going to be nice when we all reunite in person but it's it's been really cool to be able to connect this way too yeah well let's see yeah, yeah. there's so, so 
some people are are saying that maybe it would be better just to do whatever the fuck we have to do. And, you know, a lot of people are going to get sick, but it's going to, you know, go away quicker. And so we might as well, you know, just do, keep doing, you know, whatever we were doing before, just do all of our stuff. And some of us will get infected, some will die. Oh, I see what you're The economy saying. will keep going and stuff like that. So what, what do you think in regard to that? What did you say, Mateo, was the last part? What What do you guys think? I, I mean, it's, I mean, that's, that's Darwinism. Like, everyone go out and expose yourself and the strong will survive. But that sucks if your mom doesn't survive. Like, that sucks. Or if one of your kids dies. No, they, they were saying that, of course, if you are older, you stay at home, but the rest, the rest of the... And the rest of the people should just go, you know, just keep, you know, doing right. what we're doing. But are you finding that young people are getting it too, Mateo? Oh, yeah, they are, definitely. Yeah. Like, the, the thing is that, like, the only thing that changes is that uh, younger people potentially don't die. But are they going to, like, are they going to the hospital? Oh, yeah. Definitely. Okay. There's a lot of young people in the hospital. There's a lot of young people in the hospital? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. They, they, uh, the only ones that are not really affected are babies and kids, right? We're really young. This is but like there's the first a, disease that doesn't affect babies and kids. <laughs> what's that? I said this is like the first disease that doesn't affect babies yeah. and kids. Usually they're the yeah. ones that affect most. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, basically, like, uh, young people are getting it. The thing is that they're not dying because they're younger. So usually, you know, the body resists better, but they still have, like, one of the main things of this disease is that it gives you pneumonia. And even if you're young, like, it's not cool to have pneumonia. Yeah, I think yeah. your lungs are going to be damaged like forever, for the rest of your life. Yeah, I've had pneumonia the... basically takes away parts of your lungs. So if you have a really bad pneumonia, even if you're young, you can lose a big percentage of your lungs. Holy shit. And, and from then on, like your life is not going to be the same anymore. Like some people cannot do sports anymore. So it's not that maybe you don't die, but it's going to affect your life forever, you know? Right. Fuck. Yeah, that's scary shit, man. Yeah, I don't know about the whole just get out there and see what happens attitude of like mm -hmm. so, social Darwinism or whatever you want. It's like, uh... Yeah. No, yeah, no, the the thing is, uh, I mean, again, I, I don't want to play the devil's advocate. I don't think it's the right way to do it. But I was just, you know, I was just curious to see what you think about it. But oh, some, sure, people, sure. some people were saying that at the end, like, if you go on a real lockdown and maybe, you know, there's a lot of businesses that will close, a lot of people will have no money and stuff like that. So there's gonna be, it's gonna be uh, at the end, the damages to the society are gonna be the same. Uh, right. Because people won't die because uh, of the, faster. less people are gonna die because of the disease, but more people are gonna die for other problems. Know, because they don't have any more money, they can you know put food on a table, so they're gonna become homeless and you know stuff like that. So, uh, sure. But again, I don't know. I don't even know what I think about it. You know, just right, uh, right, here right. it's not even a chance. You know, so there's no. 
I was just curious because I heard it and I was like, hmm, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I get it. I've heard it too. I mean, you know, if you look at it like a robot, it, it does have a logic to it, but it's hard to take emotion out of that equation. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I agree with you. I agree with you. It's a strange thing. But yeah, thankfully we got, I mean, I'm just trying to find a positive. Uh, so Mateo can't go out and, and, Mateo, are you doing anything for exercise right now? No, no, unfortunately not. Is that like, for me, the thought of that makes me feel like I'll go crazy. Is it getting to you to not like have any physical outlet? Uh, I don't know, like, you know, deep inside, I'm a lazy guy. So, <laughs> you know, it's the most I, prolific of doing nothing, you know, and just work and that's it. I really, you know, it suits me really good, to be honest with you. Like, my old doing jujitsu, going to the gym, was a reaction to my attitude, but, uh, you know, my real nature is to do shit, you know? Right. I love drinking, eating, and <laughs> watching shit online you know so uh, so yeah yeah i know it doesn't drive me crazy i'm just sorry because i see all you know especially lately i've been training for i was training for like four five times every week it was getting better my body was getting better i was yeah. losing weight so i'm just sorry because i see all the you know all that hard work just nullified in a few weeks of activity. Damn. But, uh, Dude, what about you? Because I know you like to get physical, like exercise. In if they lock us down, are you gonna go crazy for that? Uh, yeah. I mean, I'll have to develop some in uh, at home funk dance aerobics class for myself <laughs> or something. Maybe that will become. <laughs> <laughs> that will become my my streaming channel, dude. Is like disc funk discotheque food one hour, awesome. where you you get high and you do a shot of whiskey, and then, and then you and then you just and then you just get buck wild in your living room and like do terrible dance moves to like you know funk music or whatever, but. <laughs> As of now, I mean, I'm still getting out once a day and going for a jog around the neighborhood. Um, there's really no one out. I mean, occasionally I see someone else walking their dog or whatever, but um, I, I'm, I have the advantage of like just living in a more quiet neighborhood where uh, there's not a lot of activity. So I, I can just kind of get out once or twice a day and stretch, you know. Yeah, I mean, I've, we've still been going out for walks, and I've been going out, like, I've changed my whole workout routine, because I'm the gym now. I got a, I, my studio is big enough, I can do some YouTube yoga shit in here, and then I started running outside, so, you know, a, along with my art, I'm trying to grow in that realm, too, so I'm hoping through this to get trimmer and have, have more, like, stamina with running so that's been a, a nice you know, change on my end too that's awesome yeah i mean yeah. It, you know we don't it's either you gotta think positive and be creative or you're just gonna get depressed and i've had my moments have you guys had any like depressive moments through all this uh not really so far. I just, uh, you know, I just, uh, I, I can't really define as depression. I'm just sad that I don't get, I don't have those couple, but at least three, I would say three, four moments in the week where I get to see my friends and have a nice dinner or having people over here, you know, eat together, maybe have lunch, uh, Sunday lunch all together you know 
right, right. But uh, so I feel sad sometimes because I miss that. But I wouldn't call it depression. But it's it's probably because I'm really trained to this uh, lifestyle. You know, back in the day, there's been moment in which I was uh, so full of work to do that I was basically do this. I I was doing this. I wouldn't see anyone. I wouldn't get out of the house. So you know. Right, right. I got you. There's a certain level of, yeah, almost like training that goes into yeah. being a freelancer. And uh, yeah, it's because uh, I'm, I'm sort of here anyway doing this. But yeah, I, I agree with you, Mateo, where it's like, I definitely had, you know, at least two nights a week where I'd meet friends for dinner, a drink, and uh, Obviously, that's not happening right now. So it's kind of like just that little thing missing is is uh, it's a noticeable enough thing, you know, where it's like, shit. Okay, well, how long is this going to go on for? Of like no contact, you know, whatsoever. Yeah, yeah. yeah. How, about, and how about you, Sean? Oh, wait, go ahead, go ahead. I'm sorry. I was saying, how about you, Sean? Like, I, I, because, I mean, you have your family, so I think that, you know, your life was more or less, you know, once you get out of the studio, the first thing you do is, you know, spend time with your family. So I don't think it has changed for you as well that much, um, right? No, what's changed is I don't have the gym to go to, which was like kind of my social outlet for the day. That's true, uh -huh. I have family, but at the gym, like, I, you know, I'd see, every time I go to the gym, I'd see at least two or three people I know from going there for so many years, and my yoga teachers who I'm all friendly with, so that was kind of like a social outlet for me, too, so that's gone, but no, yeah. my life is pretty much the same, so now, instead of that, I go for a run, but my wife and kids come along, and my kids go for a walk. And my wife goes for like a speed walk and I go for a run. So that's been nice to have. But I have had a lot of depression I've been fighting with. But that's all because of the, the financial impact of this. I mean, I lost all my income. My wife lost all her income. So yeah. the anxiety of that, like, I've got a mortgage payment due next Wednesday. I have no idea how I'm going to pay for that and my bills and food shopping but you know I'm also waiting to see if these government stimulus packages will help or if the mortgage companies offer some relief or what so with all that uncertainty that's got me like really hurting um, yeah shit but, man but, but mostly I'm doing good like I'm really positive today and feeling good but I think uh not not yesterday, the day before yesterday, I was really, really hurt. Um, but, and like, Jason's hurting a lot, too. He's getting real depressed. Yeah. Uh, Just because, you know. Schachter? Yeah, because, you know, his whole business is conventions for the most part. Mm -hmm. And he can't do that. So, you know, having the, like, commissions come in is helping him, but that's a big hit, too. Yeah. So I'm just, I am very thankful that I got commissions and I have some work so I can make back some of the lost income. And I'm just positively thinking that this will all work out somehow. Yes. Sean, did, did they, uh, did they decrease your, um, did you say you pay rent, dude? Or do you, you have a, you have a mortgage? I have a mortgage. Okay. Uh, we're going to ask. Some people are getting their rent decreased, like, out here. Right. Well, you know, like, I know a friend of mine, he, like, Wells Fargo holds his mortgage, and they gave everyone, like, four months off of their mortgage. Okay. I called Chase, which is my mortgage company, and they, they're not prepared at all. They have nothing. They basically sent me to the, the, the system that deals with, like, every like rare hardships like i've been working for this company for 20 years and they just fired me and i have nothing which is like 
maybe one or two people a month they have to deal with that. But it's like you're dealing with something on a much bigger scale and it's for a limited period of time. Like I, I need something in place for that. Like they're sure. like, fill out this form, you'll be assigned a caseworker, you'll go to review. I'm like, wait a minute, we're dealing with a crisis right now. I have a mortgage payment due in a week. So um, I'm just going to hope you guys fix this because this is not helpful. Oh, shit. Yeah. I'm sure they will. I mean, everyone's waiting for this government stimulus package to finally pass to see what it offers, and then we'll all make decisions. Like, I just got my statement for my studio rent, and I'm like, I mean, I, my landlord's great. She's awesome. And, and like, if I can't pay it, look, that fucks her over. So she needs to understand if the government's going to step in and help her business. To know oh yeah it's to charge us so you know it's a lot of waiting right now but it's it's taking too long if anything just this president just fucked us on so many levels with this whole thing oh sure he's yeah not equipped. he's just not dealt with this at all and he, he got rid of agencies that were built to prepare for this yeah so that shit's insane but yeah, I'm just kind of waiting to see what kind of relief we're going to get. I mean, if, if we're seriously looking at this for another two months, I mean, we're talking eight to 10 weeks of no income. My wife, like, she can't take on commissions with like facials. Like, she needs to be at work with clients. So I'm just going to keep doing what I can do, uh, trying to drive my Kickstarter, try to take on missions um oh yeah but you know, i'm just waiting to see what's going to happen how do people get a hold of you for commissions uh j just contact me or jason very essential email jason at um uh, jason at essential .com. do you hear that people i i, I hope so get, get, get to it right now because i've got a good bit of commissions is if you can get involved with the Kickstarter, that would be great. Yeah. That's the that's the biggie right now. Alright, I think I'm fucking ready to paint this bitch. Let me see what you got. Is it in front? Oh, yeah. Nice. Let me, let me walk over and see what you guys are doing here. I finished the uh... This pencil page, which was a uh, pretty, you know, easy, easy one. Uh-huh. So now I'm back on this one, which is um, done now. Nice. Awesome. Awesome. I wish I could control the camera. Talk, Mateo, so it goes back to you. Yeah, so, okay. So yeah, this is uh, Jim. This is what I was uh, telling you about. So I'm doing all the, you know, beautiful gray tones and shit. And uh, yeah, so it's uh, they take a little bit longer than usual. So well, it looks really good, man. Thanks, so it's man. It, it's pencils, inks, and gray toning, all done practically on paper. Well, yeah, inks like. Great toning and inks, it's it's all in one single, you know, uh, session. I don't know. To yeah. Say that. So I see. It's like how, how you do your commissions. Yeah, it's exactly how, how I do my commissions. So I wanted to, you know, I wanted to to do it because uh, I, I, I tried to do this before when I started Black Science. My whole plan was to do it all with this style. But uh, then, you know, the, we we I had a Dean White color in it, and oh, Dean yeah. White is already really uh, pictorial. Uh, I don't know if I used the right word. Painterly, very painterly. Yeah. So, you know, there was no point in having two, you know, two steps of it. So basically, I I went back to you know. 
you know, the, the, every great tones that I would do would get covered. So, so basically I was like, okay, so I'm going back to my traditional way of inking. And sure. I'll let him do all the, the work. So, so he was just covering up the work you had done. Yeah, you know, I, I, I don't, I basically don't think it was the right match for that, this kind of inking. So I basically let it go. So, so yeah, that's it. I, I now I decided that I want to give it a shot again, especially because this is just uh, six issues. So it's not a big deal. I'm almost done with this first issue and it's gone great so far so well also your pages are going to sell so well a because of how they look because of the technique you're using b because of what the book is about and c because you're such a fucking rock star artist so that will <laughs> be cool to see how fast that goes yeah hopefully you know i won't get uh fucked by this uh, time weird times Maybe you know people are more or less inclined to, you know, buy originals, but we'll see. We'll see. I think I think we'll be okay there. I mean, that's my hope or my positive thinking that that will bounce back fine. Yeah. 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 yeah you're probably right. So, dude, do you ever lose stuff when you're drawing that was just in your hand, but you put it aside, not thinking, and you have no idea where it is? No, it's just you because you're dumb. But uh, <laughs> now, now you're dumb. Warmed up. I just lost my tape roll. But no, you know what? Like, it doesn't really happen to me because I'm I'm really keeping my table, you know, as essential as possible. So, what I have here on the table is all that I need, and that's it. So everything else is inside something, but on the table, there's actually only the stuff that I really need. Yeah, so. me too. But this, I, like, I rarely use the tape, and I just have it in my hand, and I just tape that one part down. Oh, duh, it's, on top, it's around my water bottle, that's why. That was really good. Uh -huh. That's what I did. I put it on my water bottle. Oh, oh. Uh, speaking of which, yeah. I just got this uh, nibs. I'm starting to use nibs for this job. Are you? What oh, really? What are you using? Yeah. Yeah, because uh, for, you know, normally for really small things, um, I use uh, I use liners. Yeah. But here, I need uh, gray lines. Yeah. Uh, I, I need different tones of lines. Yeah. So these ones are... Obviously, they're just black. There's no gray version of this. Right, right. So I'm using this uh, knee, but actually, this one is the one that Sean Murphy suggested. That it's it's the one that he uses for his pages. Is that the, the leader or the Tachikawa? I think I turned them onto those. The leader. Yeah, the deleter Maru nib. Yeah, the leader. Uh, what's the name of this one? Is it Maru? Model, yeah, model. Yeah, that's the one I turned Sean on to years ago. Yeah, those are good. Now, do you keep different solutions of your ink? Like, do you have like a like a? Sorry, sorry, Sean. Just one second. Sorry. Jim, how's your stuff coming along? Oh, good, man. I'm uh, working on a piece for my, um, well, I was working on this earlier, the Skull Funk Radio, my podcast. I'm doing a little paint. Sorry, guys. That's okay. Just giving some cooking advice. So. Can Sorry. you guys, uh, you can keep speaking in Italian and we'll just sit here and listen Back. to your, your lovely accents. And, and touch yourself. And, and fantasize about uh, delicious Italian food. <laughs> <laughs> Wish. Matteo, so do you, I was asking you, do you keep different like values of ink in different jars? Yeah, yeah. 
So then it's, it's the thing that I'm doing now just for, uh, you know, for this book, because it, I normally like, I've always, I've always used uh, the gray tones for uh, pinups and covers as well. Right. But for those, I just, you know, I just know how much I have to keep the brush in the water. And I, I already know what kind of intensity I have on the brush. But here, since, you know, it's a, it's a full page. Yeah. Oh, it's, uh, it's, you know, I can't, I can't do that. It would take too much time. Every so will you show us the, will you show us the ink bottles you're using, the different levels? Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. But, you know, I, if I show you like this, you won't see, you won't be able to. Oh, they're little trays. Yeah. I just want to yeah. see what you kept it in. They're like little trays. Yeah. It's this. This things. Oh, okay, okay. And you keep a lid on it. Yeah, yeah. I I keep like I put another one on top of them. Oh. Just to you know, so that don't uh, evaporate. Oh, cool. That's awesome. But uh, yeah. Oh, hey, Matteo. That oh. that ink that you bought at that crazy Japanese art store when we were in Tokyo. Yeah. Did you did you wind up using some of that stuff? Not yet, and you know what? But I opened this once. You remember this once? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. They wanted to keep because of this uh, this one. You see, it's the same one that I yes. use. So yeah. soon I gotta change this one. So I wanted one to to you know replace it. But sure. this is not ink. <laughs> it's not. No, it's a pain. It's a transparent thing. I don't know what it is, to be honest with you. Oh shit! It's uh, I don't know if you can see it. It's um, white. Is it like a a gel medium, like a clear? Mine like be. like um uh fuck. What's it called? Um. Like a like a matte medium or something. I don't know. I mean, there's something solid inside. And, oh, you know what it is? Shit, it's silver. Oh shit! Okay. Oh, it's like a metallic ink. Yeah. It's a metallic yeah. ink. Metallic ink, because I mean it's white, but it's because all the all the silver is deposited on the bottom. You, you actually had to like stir it up, mix it up. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mateo, is that the white you're using? Was that? This white bottle I'm holding, is this what you're using for your white out? Uh, no, I use uh, this one. Uh, it's um, Holbein Aeroflesh. Oh, yeah, this is Holbein Acrylic Ink. I think it's just. I think they started repackaging Aeroflash as this, I think. Is that Holbein? Yeah, it's Holbein. Oh, okay. And I bought some other uh, ones. Let me show you. But uh, I still have to, I still have to try them out. This, this one is the Liquitex. Uh-huh. Yeah. Then golden fluid acrylic. Oh yeah, that's good stuff. Yeah. Yep. And Vallejo. Vallejo, I think, is a really good brand. I don't know that brand. And that's it. Golden's a very good brand. Golden's really good. All right, fellas. I think I'm gonna start to wrap it up. Is there anything you uh wanted to say or talk about before we go and oh before you go so jim this is the one that i bought uh sean yeah. Yeah. i bought this one in japan i basically picked the most expensive one that they had that's ink I, I, i'm just hoping it's ink now but i i think it <laughs> let's 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 do an unveiling live on the on the show yeah, yeah. yeah. Jim, jim don't talk let let me tear talk okay all right, so the bottle's pretty fancy. 
I spent a lot. I, I don't remember how much I spent, but I spent a lot. Like this one was really, really expensive. So looks looks like ink though. So yeah. All right, just give me a sec. It's very handsome packaging. Yeah. So if if any Japanese uh, listener is gonna listen to this, so whenever you got time, just give me the translation for <laughs> this thing over here. Sorry, there's a lot of reflection because it's really glossy. And uh, let's see. <laughs> <laughs> let me mix it up a little bit you're good at that oh yeah <laughs> years of training <laughs> all right mixing all right. cocktails uh, grab a piece of paper I'm excited. I love new art supplies. I love seeing this shit. <laughs> <laughs> Let me try to put a little bit. Ooh. Hmm. Smells good. Smells like uh, dust. Oh, really? Yeah, it's like, you know, inks, and, and at least to me, ink smells a little bit like dust. Oh, almost like the dirt, like the fiber, yeah. like the, yeah. the, the, the grain, the grain that it's made from. Yeah. Yeah, it's really intense, man. It's almost a dark gray acrylic. It's, it's really, really dense. Wow. Let me let me see what happens when I mix it with water. Here's a quick technical question for you guys. When you open up a new bottle of ink like that, do you do the thing where you let it stay open for like 24 hours? I do, I do. I do that as well, like to oxidize it. Is that a thing? I, I think it, it probably is. Yes, it evaporates, it makes it thicker. I mean, you know me, yeah. like, I use ink that's like, tar in thickness because I get all that dry brush so I yeah I personally don't do it because I like the ink to be as thin as possible Sean you like the thick shit just because you're a huge fan of hash and you want your ink That's right. to be to be tar like I want that like, like oil yes <laughs> yeah well I mix I make a concoction, one part FW and one part FW Cali. And I, when after I make that mix, I let it stay open for days. Wow, okay. And even then, that concoction lasts me like a month or so. The first week, it's still too thin. And I, don't, I, can, I can get what I want out of it, but it's a pain in the ass. But like- right three it's perfect it's just trial and error coming up with your formulas right i mean that's what we all do yeah 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 totally. well i personally just uh i personally just use uh the speedball the way it is already yeah feel He's getting too thick. I just uh, changed to a new, new one. You know? Right. Show us, show us what that ink is doing, Mateo. Hold it up. So uh, it's pretty gray, but it's yeah. not. You know the. Um, it's not. You know the the speedball, which is the one that I usually that I always use. Yeah. When you dilute it with water, it becomes a really warm. Yes. Gray. yes. This yes. one is more neutral. Okay. Okay. But it's uh, it's really nice, and oh, the smell of it is amazing. I do like a good smelling ink. Yeah. 
I'd be curious, Mateo, if you like, if you do leave that open and let it sit for like a day or two, like if it if it will change, you know. Mm -hmm. Um. But yeah, I mean, it looks like it looks like something that would go into your into your palette of of like the full gray tone work. Oh yeah, definitely. I'm trying to use it pure on the paper to see. It's really, really, you know, it covers a lot. It doesn't, uh, you know, really covering. Really, I don't know if it makes sense as a word. Yeah, yeah, it does. I know what you're saying. It's really dense. Really opaque. Yeah. It's almost like acrylic. It's really. Oh, yeah, look at that. You know? Yeah, that's cool. All right, fellas. Anything else you wanted to talk about? Uh, I'm good. I'm good. All right. Yeah, man. All right, well, I'm going to thank everyone for listening. And, guys, when I hit stop recording, I'm not going to end the call just yet, but I'll stop the record in a second. But thank you all for sitting through this. Say goodbye, Mateo. Yeah. Take care, guys. Bye-bye. Bye. Thanks Jim. for listening. Jim, give your goodbyes. You guys, take care. I made a weird, strange drawing. I don't know what this is, but uh, you guys take care of each other. Stay home, chill. Watch a good old movie. <laughs> Smoke some weed. <laughs> Sounds like a sounds like a recipe. All right, thanks again for listening, everyone. Uh, next episode will be up in a couple of days, I think.